What's up guys, it's G-Ball. Today I'm playing VTOL VR and I'm going to show you the new fighter, the F-45. Uh, it doesn't really come with an instruction manual, so I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the things I figured out. Now, I've not played a lot of flight sims, um, but I think this is pretty cool. Just kind of trying to figure it out as I go. So VTOL VR is one of the first made for VR flight sims. Um, it started off with this vertical takeoff and landing AV-42, which is kind of based on the VF-22 Osprey. Uh, then later they came out with the FA-26B, uh, basically your standard twin engine fighter. Um, kind of reminds me of the F-15. And then the F-45 just came out. And this is a stealth fighter. Uh, it's quite a bit smaller and slower than the F-A-26. Um, but it can be pretty interesting. Uh, and this one also has vertical takeoff and land capabilities. Um, so let's walk through the F-45. Now I'm going to start with just a quick flight. Um, just so we can kind of go through how to take off, how the different systems work. Uh, there's not a lot of content out there yet for the F-45, at least not that much official content. Uh, but one of the cool things they introduced for VTOL VR is the ability to use the Steam Workshop. Um, and the Steam Workshop lets people build their own missions, which are pretty cool. Uh, so I've got four missions that other people have built. There's a ton of other missions out there, so you're not going to run out of stuff to do uh, once you figure out how to fly. But that in itself will take hours. <laughs> um, so let's start with the quick flight. Uh, I'm just going to do free flight, which means there's no enemies. And... So a little picture of the F-45. Let's go ahead and configure the aircraft. So when you're configuring, you basically see the aircraft in front of you, and you can pick whatever kind of weapons and stuff you want. Um, now one thing we need to be careful of is how heavy our plane is. Um, so this TWR, thinking it's something about the flight weight rating, takeoff weight rating, something like that. We want that to be above 1.0 if we want to do a vertical takeoff. Uh, that's something I did not realize at first. You can make this plane way too heavy to do the vertical takeoff. Um, and then you'll kind of just be wondering why it won't take off. And that's why it might just be too heavy. Um, so we can reduce our fuel. Um, but even with a full fuel load, uh, we should still be able to take off. Uh, but once we start putting bombs and all kinds of stuff on here, we can go over that weight rating real quick. Um, so, since we're just starting out flying the aircraft, I'm not going to put any weapons on it. Uh, we're just going to keep it light. I'm even going to turn down the fuel so we have a nice, easy vertical takeoff. You'll also see this number turn red if it's too heavy, so it'll be obvious once you know to look for it. Oh, and I just noticed it still says FA-26 there. It should say F-45. Right, but let's go ahead and launch. Pop on our helmet. And then a couple things I like to do right away is move the joystick um, so it's pretty close to a comfortable position for me. Kind of wish there were a couple more options, but that's pretty good. Um, the throttle you're kind of stuck with, so I actually put my armrest all the way down on this side so it doesn't get in the way of the throttle. Uh, you can also move the whole seat up and down, so that might help as you're kind of getting adjusted. Uh, but we're going to turn on the battery. And then next we need to spin up the APU. That gives us enough power to start the engine. We wait for that to spin all the way up and then just kind of find its idle. 
Um, and then once that needle stops moving, we can go ahead and start the engine. And once the engine goes back down to idle, we can turn off our APU. It'll save us a little bit on fuel. Uh, we'll turn on the multifunction device, which is the main screen. We see our fuel up at the top right. Um, there's all kinds of stuff we can turn on, like a navigation map, radar. Uh, if you have radar, make sure you turn it on. You can set the range. I always max out the range. Um, we can show a tactical situation display that kind of shows us all the units around us and we can zoom way out with this one kind of see everything going on around us um, electronic targeting that gives us our infrared camera um, but there's all kinds of other instruments you can play around with here once you get a layout you like you can just hold down one of these layout buttons and save it for next time so i actually have four different layouts saved, just that I've been messing around with. Uh, can also expand all this stuff, just so we can see a little better. And if you want to, you can even make one of these take up half of this screen. Um, so if you really wanna see that camera or you really wanna see your map, you can make them take up half this screen. It's pretty cool. All right, uh, so our engine's on, our APU's off. Um, next, I'm gonna turn the parking brake off and I'm just gonna roll out a little bit. Oh, before I do that, actually, uh, we wanna turn our head-mounted display on as well. That gives us the HUD in front of us um, with information about our speed, altitude. Um, on that bottom right, you can see where you're holding the joystick, which is nice since it's not a real joystick. You can at least see where it is. Um, and then the same thing with the throttle on the bottom left. You can see it go up and down. You can see when you pull the trigger to hit the brake. Um, and there's one more component that I'll talk about there in a minute. Uh, also, if you're on the carrier, make sure you fold your wings down. Your plane will not fly very well with the wings folded up. And if you're starting on an aircraft carrier, they will be folded up. So make sure you fold them down before you take off. Uh, stuff like flaps, you don't have to worry about on the F-45. It just handles that all on its own. Um, so I'm gonna turn off my parking brake. Let me close this cover so I don't accidentally shut off my engine later. And we're just gonna roll forward a little. So I'm just pushing that throttle up, maybe 15%, pushing it all the way back down, and I hit my brake. Now the cool thing about the F-45, like I said, is we can do a vertical takeoff. Um, and we are light enough to do that, so I can just, I'm using my left stick and I'm pulling it toward myself. And I tilted the engines all the way up to 90 degrees. Now, anytime the engines are tilted, you can't use the afterburner, so you only see the throttle hit 75% or so uh, when the engines are tilted. But now that they're tilted up, we can do a vertical takeoff if we want to. Uh, so I will just raise the throttle, raise it a little beyond 50%, and we should see ourselves start to raise off the ground. Now, I have a very light aircraft right now, so that was easy, um, but it gets much more difficult the heavier your aircraft gets. You can also turn on things like wind now. Uh, obviously, if it's windy, vertical flight's gonna be tough. Uh, but I try not to spin around too much here and just go straight up. And once we get uh, high up enough off the ground, we can turn on the vertical control autopilot. 
and that's going to automatically transition us to normal flight. So it's going to be tilting our engines, uh, tilting our flaps, closing that lift fan, and getting us set up to fly forward. Oh yeah, and we want to raise our landing gear as well. So that was the vertical takeoff. I'm going to twist my joystick a little. Uh, and just kind of turn to the left here. And we can zoom out on this nav map to kind of get a better idea of what's around us. Now another cool thing we can do is we have a visor on our helmet. Um, you might remember with the FA-26, you turn on the visor and night vision from down here. Uh, but on this aircraft, we do it right on the helmet. So on the left side of my helmet, I just pull the trigger and that turns on my visor. Uh, that gives me a little information as I look around instead of having to always look forward at the HUD. So I can see my altitude, my heading, my airspeed. Um, if I have any weapons, I can see that no matter which direction I'm looking, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if I put targeting on my head mode, um, I can even basically look right through the airplane at whatever target I want to see. turn that off because that can get distracting and we've got an aircraft carrier down there you can actually land on that um, but it's a little difficult um, but if you ever want to the blue lines basically tell you the flight path you should take um, but I have not figured out the carrier landings yet so I don't think we're gonna try that today uh, let's just go to our right. We're just going to kind of spin around and head back toward the airport. So we can see the airport straight out from us ahead. I'm gonna try to line right up with that runway. And we're gonna start slowing down. So I'm trying to line up that little airplane symbol right with the end of the runway. And we're a little right of where we want to be, so I'm going to try to creep just to the left. But we don't want to make any big corrections because it gets harder and harder to line back up if we do. I'm going to slow us down even more and drop that landing gear. Still just a bit to the right. And I'm gonna break a little bit, slow us down even more. And we're definitely gonna wanna bring the nose up. Drop the throttle and hold that brake all the way down. Try to keep us on the runway.
Cool. So that's the F45.